Software development approaches used in commercial systems, prepared originally by the delightful Ivor Houston in 2017 and revised in 2019 by the Software Design Development Class of 2020 and presented by me. A software development approach is a process of dividing software development work into distinct phases to improve design, product management and project management. There are a number of different development processes, however most modern processes can be vaguely described as agile. For all development approaches, you must define and understand your problem, plan and design how to go about fixing the problem, implement these fixes, test and evaluate, and then refine your uh, solution as need be, as well as of course maintaining these solu this solution. To choose an approach, you have to consider quite a few factors such as how big is your product? Is it a large scale project with a lot of people or a small team, even down to one person um, uh, creating the product? The time required. How long do you have to complete the project and what skill set is necessary for completion? Finances. Do you have the, the, the money to hire people? If it's a large project, or do you have the, soft, the money to buy software? If you can't afford it, is there an open source option? Have you the money to train staff? Knowing the specifications and details before starting, you'll be able to choose an approach that is the most appropriate in terms of speeding up the time it takes to create a product, and even allow for further development and to improve the end, pardon me, the end product to plan out the development stages and for a smoother development run. Selecting the most appropriate development approach is crucial when it comes to developing a new software product. Software development approaches include the structured development approach, prototyping, agile, end user, and rapid development. Structured development is a traditional approach to software development. This method is known as the waterfall method, which starts at the top and works its way down to the bottom. It mirrors the structured top-down approach used in the design of algorithms for procedural development. This particular approach is mainly suited to software development where all requirements of the product are defined and understood before any planning and designing begins. The prototyping approach lends itself to interactions between customers and software developers. Like agile development, prototyping allow, uh, requires a computational process. Selecting this approach will require all prototypes to be better than the original and and must have all requirements met before turning it into a final product. The Agile approach emphasizes the team development on the system rather than following a predefined structure. Using Agile development often removes the need for detailed requirements and complex design documentation. Typical characteristics of Agile software development include quick thinking, collaboration, and adaptation. End user development is an approach to software development that is popular, uh, that in, which involves businesses creating their own products by customizing other applications, such as using wizards and other automatic code generating tools. The device, uh, they develop, developers develop their software using tools they are familiar with and focus on problems that have little regard to testing or usability issues. Rapid application development, also known as RAD, is a software development approach that allows for usable systems to be built within a short time frame. This type of approach often aims to reduce development time so that the majority of requirement can be met and implemented as quickly as possible. In some more detail, the structured development approach is usually considered as a traditional development style. It consists of a detailed plan that is built into the start and followed all the way through, which includes implementation, testing, and maintenance. The requirements, requirements analysis is a process of defining the expectations of the user for an application that is to be built or modified. A requirements analysis involves all the tasks that are be, to be conducted to identify the needs of different stakeholders. Software design is a process to transform user requirements into some suitable form, which helps the program in software coding and implementation. Software testing is an activity to check whether the actual results match the expected results to ensure that the software system is defect free. 
It involves execution of software components or system components to evaluate one or more properties of interest. Examples of a structured approach. A company produces and sells a product that needs to interface with a light sensor units produced by different manufacturers. A driver needed, needs to be developed for each new light sensor unit that is released to the market. A structured approach will be suitable for this situation because the company needs to develop a driver for each new light sensor as it is released. A solution can therefore be planned, designed and implemented and tested and evaluated without risk that the requirements will change during the development cycle. A structured approach is needed because it's a very big project in which every stage must be completed before the next uh, stage commences. By definition, agile means quick thinking and coordinated. It means the ability to adapt to changing situations. This is not only refers to an individual's ability, but also the flexibility of specific parts of a project. Agile development removes the need for detailed requirements and complex design documentation. It is a particularly well suited to web-based software development, as well as other software applications that are modified regularly, such as those that are evolved and updated over time. Typically, small teams of developers are used uh, as teams, smaller teams are usually more effectively able to share ideas and work on solutions together. Software solutions evolve through collaboration between these self-organizing and cross-functioning teams by determining which practices are most appropriate for their context. Prototyping approach lends itself to an intense communication between the software developer and the customer. A prototype is created after every iteration. This prototype is then adjusted until the customer is happy with the final outcome. A few ways it is implemented are rapid throwaway. This means that this method involves developing a prototype based on initial requirements, which is then improved through customer feedback. The name refers to the fact that prototypes are discarded and may not be part of the final iteration. Evolutionary. This approach has continuous prototype uh, has a continuous prototype which is refined after each iteration of customer feedback. Because each prototype is not started from scratch, this method saves time and effort. Incremental. This technique divides the final product into smaller components or iterations. The prototype is created for each component, which is then all merged into a final product. Rapid application development. Is a development uh, uh, model which prioritizes rapid prototyping and quick feedback. With rapid development, prototypers can make, up, make updates to software rapidly without needing to start uh, a development sh uh, scheme from scratch each time. James Martin, pictured earlier on, pioneered the rapid application development approach during the 1980s at IBM and finally formalized it in a published book in no 1991. Rapid application development allows a usable system to be built within a small budget and a small amount of time with a small team. Often software development using traditional methods may take a long time and the requirement for the new system may have fundamentally shifted by the time the new system software is ready to use. RAD aims to reduce the development time so that the majority of requirements can be met and implemented as quickly as possible as discussed in John Martin's book. There are disadvantages to RAD. There is a lack of formal stages. There is a reduced development time, reduced uh, quality. Rapid application has only become possible as a result of fourth generation programming languages. Oops, go back one. These languages enable a visual, pro uh, a visual production of user interfaces and the integration of reusable components into the new products with very little programming. This result in final outcome contains minimal code. For example, Scratch is a programming language based on uh, that is used to make games for students who are learning to code. It's a visual programming in interface. Very little code involved, but can be, you can develop very quickly. End user development. End user development is a style of development in which the developer of the program is also the user of the program. This means there tends to be a lack of formal stages as a developer may have in mind what they already require. This style of development also tends to have smaller budgets than others and we use previously made software packages to assist in speeding up development. 
This can be done as an example through Microsoft Access. An example, a doctor's surgery employs a programmer to develop a software application to manage appointments and patient records. The programmer has decided to use a combination of prototyping and rapid application development in the software development. So, why would the programmer use a combination of rapid application development and prototyping? Would the programmer be able to use then, would try that again, would the programmer then be able to on-sell their software? Are there any legal impl implications for selling that software? Well, the answers are, and this is a broad answer, A, the programmer has chosen rapid development due to the fast time frame and limited budget. In addition to rapid application development, using a use of prototyping is effective as it is vital for the doctor to interpret the software appropriately. In regards to user interface, usability is key as a doctor's office may be fast moving and unable to spend time learning newly developed software interfaces. Considering part B, in order to sell the developed software, contracts must be drawn up in regards to who owns the developed software. The fact the program was hired to develop this software and not as a private solo act changes the ownership. If the programmer decides that as a lone developer uh, and then approach the doctor's office, they may be able to sell the software as a freelancer. They may sell the software alone and not confidential patient information, of course. 